Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and I just watched Shock Treatment, which is a sequel follow-up. It's a second movie by Richard O'Brien. We're not quite sure if this is actually supposed to have anything to do with the Rocky Horror Picture Show, or if it just so happens to have the characters or some of the characters from the original some of the characters being Janet and Brad, who are now married, um, who are living in Denton, which the city itself is actually a whole studio. All of the inhabitants live in the audience, and then, of course, they're part of this live show, I suppose. It's, it's weird. I'm very confused. Of course, there's a lot of character not even characters, there's actors that we recognize from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And also Rick Mayall, which was delightful to see him because I'm a huge fan of The Young Ones and Drop Dead Fred. Like, Drop Dead Fred was my jam as like an eight-year-old child. Like, that's all I wanted to watch. Three ninjas, three ninjas kicked back. Drop Dead Fred, Heathers, which I probably shouldn't have been watching. Never Ending Story, that one movie with Jonathan Brandis and Chuck Norris, I think it's called Sidekicks. You can't find that anywhere. Completely off topic. But like, I was super stoked to see Rick Mayall. I love him so much. Um, so essentially, during this filming of We Love Denton, or whatever the heck it's called, Janet and Brad get singled out to be on kind of like a marriage topical show where they call out Brad for being a little emotionally unstable, which, I mean, if you've seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I don't think that's well out of the realm of reality. You know, they both went through some stuff during that movie, for sure. I think we all went through a lot of stuff. I love that movie so much. But they deem Brad to be so mentally unfit that they put him into Denton Vale, which is essentially like a quote-unquote rest home, but we, we know what it is. And the doctors are trying to help him. All they're pretty much doing is just pumping him full of medications and letting him sit in a straight jacket in a wheelchair in a cage. So, for some reason, they're very focused on Janet saying that she's Miss Mental Health, which, like, no, she's not. But <laughs> that, that's, that's, you know, she, that's, that's the whole thing going. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. There's just a lot of weird stuff. Their sponsor is this fast food place that their symbol looks remarkably like, um, a swastika. And it's just, it's strange. The songs I did not get into, I, I just, I don't know if it's because I've seen Rocky Horror Picture Show so many times and I used to go to like the midnight movies and do the audience participation. I'm just so invested in that movie. Even if it wasn't a good movie, I don't care because I have so much love for it. But this movie is so weird and it's, uh, uh, Jessica Harper's in it. She plays Janet. She's amazing in other movies, but I felt like her continued eye contact with the camera kind of threw me off because I like watching it. I was always like, I, I always thought that they kind of advise actors not to stare into the camera straight on. It's a little off putting, but her voice, um, I love so much. It was beautiful. I've never heard her sing before and holy crap, beautiful. It's so nice to hear such a different range in a movie. Just amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Um, little Nell was back under a different name. So awesome to see her. We got to see a lot of her butt cheeks, which was great too, I guess. I, I'm just, I understand probably why this isn't a very popular movie. Cause some of it like just didn't hit the mark. I, it would be so relevant now with all of the reality TV that we have, or it would have been maybe even more relevant like 
I don't know, 10 years ago when all the reality stuff started to have a movie like this, but I, I just, I'm at a loss. It's an interesting concept for a movie, for sure. I thought that, you know, the storyline was hard to follow. The songs were a little... Uh, it's, I'm just, like, so scatterbrained doing this review. The first song we heard, the opening for, you know, like the intro, let's say, some of it didn't make sense. Some of it didn't rhyme. Some of it was so cringe. There was a lot of cringe in this movie. This movie was so full of cringe. Just like, mmm, like I hope these people that are acting are doing great right now because I feel kind of bad for them. But like, I love Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn and Little Nell and Rick Mayall so much. I just like, what is this? What? I love you, but what is this? What have you put in front of me? I couldn't even find this movie on like any streaming services. I didn't look to buy it because I, I needed instant gratification and I wanted to watch it now. So I found it streaming on YouTube with like 5,000 ads in it. And I don't know if the ads even took me out of it because I was so confused as to what was happening. Like the whole storyline of Brad being an orphan and that must be the cause of like all of his his mental trauma like I don't think that was it like if we're gonna like I said if we're gonna reference the other film that had this character that's that's for sure not the reason for his trauma because he seemed relatively like well adjusted he was a square but like he seemed fine in the beginning of the Rocky Horror Picture Show um, well, help to throw me a bone, something. I, the costumes in this were incredible and amazing. I loved them. I loved the costume design. I felt like the sets were very stylized. They definitely had an eighties vibe to them. Just, you know, the opulence and there was a lot of fake vines, which are actually popular right now for some reason because everything's cyclical and it comes back. But uh, I don't know what I just watched. I watched the whole thing and I'm confusion. Um, I also subjected two cats into watching this. I don't know if you can see him, but he, he definitely watched it and it, it knocked him out. He's a very, very tired little man here. But we, we made it through and we finished it and I don't even know what to rate this. I feel like I should watch it at least one more time before I completely, you know, get my thoughts together. But this, this was my, my initial reaction. Confusion. Let's give it, I don't know, a two out of five for childhood nostalgia and awesome costumes. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts on this movie? Please leave me some comments down below. I know there's like a lot of undertones of consumerism and everything like that, but I just, I couldn't even focus on that and appreciate it because of the cringe and just what, what is happening. They cured a, a man of blindness in this movie. I should have been really stoked about that, but I wasn't because I was confused. Join me in my confusion. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can follow me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Reanimator. You can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. And I hope that um, you're having a great day and you're not experiencing all these weird feelings that I am. I'll see you guys later. Bye.